Hi, I'm Glenn. And I'm Brent. And, and we're, we're the Penumbra, Penumbra Brothers. Brothers. We focus, focus on, on you. Hey everybody, this is Brent. Uh, I'm here with Lila, one of our interns who is uh, so graciously offered to kind of help us make this video. We're gonna talk about lumbar spine films today. Lumbar spine images. It shows my age, so I'm talking about films still. Um, so lumbar spine is something we do fairly frequently, probably much more frequently than thoracic spine, uh, and pretty easy to do what gets most people's obliques. We'll spend more time on the obliques than anything else. Uh, so as far as centering, we want to get our, our tube centered to our bucky tray like we always do. I've got my right marker here, a little bit to the right side of, of midline. I'm move that over maybe just a little bit. Uh, and again, when you're working with a bucky tray, key is to slide that guy in. Now leave your tube and bucky tray alone. Anytime you start moving one, you're going to have to move the other. So now, once we get that lined up, we're going to line our patients up. We're going to use the iliac crest for, for guidance. We're going, to, we're going to center about two fingers above the iliac crest. I'm going to have your arms down to the sides, right, like so. I'm going to open this up just a little bit. Okay, and a lumbar spine, we want it, that diaphragm incursion to be up as high as we can. We want to see nice, even density. And so I'm going to take this on a full expiration, moving that diaphragm up. So take a big breath, all the way out, blow it out, and make the exposure, and there's our AP. Okay, next, if I'm doing five views, which is typically you're doing lumbar spines, either three views or five views. Three views would be an AP, a lateral, and a L5-S1 spot. Five views would include both obliques. So when I'm doing obliques, um, you typically have the patient roll towards me first because the second oblique, they're rolling away from me, and then you just have to roll a little bit farther to be in a lateral position. So that's my technique. Is. So I'm gonna have you roll about halfway towards me. A lot of people will use a sponge, and the problem with the sponge is, especially if you have a large patient, not probably not in Lila's case, but in a large patient, if they lean back against that, that sponge too far, you're going to be less than 45 degrees. And 45 degrees works for a bunch of reasons. Number one, that's what we want to see the little Scotty dogs or the zygopophyseal joints. We need to be at 45 degrees. And also, if they're less than 45 degrees or more than 45 degrees, the centering trick I'm going to show you is not going to work. You're either going to be behind the, the lumbar spine or in front of the lumbar spine. So about 45 degrees. What you can do, if you just bring that arm across, and if you just bend your top knee for me and straighten your bottom one, and just rest that foot back there on the table, or no, this foot, oh. top foot, yeah, your other foot. <laughs> there we go. And bring this arm across a little bit more and roll your hips back just a little bit. Even without the sponge, roll back a little bit more. You can get her about 45 degrees. Uh, some people will reach back here and kind of feel and feel the spine, or some people will go down and look one end of the table or the other. You can also kind of follow her, her spine down from her cervical spine, and you can kind of follow where to center. But generally, if they're 45 degrees, you're going to center. Same thing, up and down, a couple fingers above the AS, or the uh, crest, and a couple fingers inside the ASI, ISIS, as you can kind of judge from your iliac crest, just like so. I'm going to turn this a little bit to kind of match your spine. Same thing. Breath in, blow it all the way out, take it on expiration. That moves those diaphragms up and you get this nice even density. So next, I'm gonna have Lily roll to her left, about the same thing, about halfway up. Good, bend that top knee. There you go, perfect. So arm across, about 45 degrees. You get rid of this. Slide your hips forward just a little bit farther, good. And roll, shoulders feel good, roll your hips back just slightly. Good. Okay, looking down the table, it's at 45, falling our cervical spine right down. I'm gonna have a roll back just slightly. Good. Okay, breath in, all the way out, make the exposure. There's our left oblique, or left posterior oblique. Now I'm gonna have her continue rolling up on her side have her put both knees together. Having both knees together and bent almost does most of the work for you. It actually gets people into that lateral position without doing much at all. It's really important though to make sure not only her hips are lateral, but also her shoulders lateral. Uh, so I'm gonna have her up on her shoulder a little bit more. Good. Roll back just slightly. Gonna wanna see her nice lateral position. I do a lot of standing down the table here and looking at that lateral position. I'm gonna move this collimator over a little bit to kind of match her, her angle so I don't make her scoot around too much. Again, two fingers above the iliac crest, like so. The lumbar spine is the most, the lateral lumbar spine is the most dense, most scatter producing radiograph we're gonna take. And so there's a couple tricks. Number one, collimation is always good. Uh, also laying a little bit of lead strip behind this lumbar spine, uh, sometimes really help that. If you get too close to the patient, there's, there's a chance with digital technology now that can mess with that algorithm a little bit, uh, but I haven't had this happen much at all. So if you can lay a, a lead apron, She's just a lead sheet here. 
A little bit of lead right behind that lumbar spine will absorb some of that scatter that comes off the lumbar spine and not allow it to reach your IR and make a, a little bit cleaner image. So again, collimation. Um, again, a smaller person like Lila, you're not having to use those heavy techniques, but if you have somebody that's three or 400 pounds, you get a significant amount of scatter off the lumbar spine, more scatter than you get again in any other study. So there's our lateral. Again, breath in, blow it out. Notice I haven't moved the tube, I haven't moved my bucky tray, I'm just moving her, okay? So the last one is gonna be an L5S1 spot. An L5S1 spot is meant to look for spondylolisthesis or other abnormalities of your last lumbar vertebrae, your first sacral segment. That's where a lot of motion occurs in the back. Kind of like from your, your cervical spine, a lot of motion occurs from C7 to T1. Lumbar spine it occurs from L5 and S1, and it's a real common uh, area for problems. Also, people have congenital defects of their pars sometimes, which allows a lot of spondylolisthesis. We want to see that happening. Uh, so we're going to take a specialized view of that L5-S1. So she's going to stay in the same position. Most females, because they usually have wider hips, you're going to need a little bit of an angle. Um, and I kind of judge by, by the patient. Lila, probably, I'm probably going to use probably 10 degrees on Lila. Now this, because I moved my tube, now I have, do have to move my, my Bucky tray a little bit. So I'm going to either line that up or line Bucky up. So I'm going to go down here. Then two fingers below the crest, right at midline. Some people make kind of a C with their finger. Some people will aim at their PIP of their index finger. And it's a little scary when you first do this because it's a pretty small field of view, but you really need to collimate pretty aggressively. Remember, this is divergent out. So by the time this divergent ray, by the time it hits that IR, we're gonna have an image like so big. So uh, first time kind of scary. Again, two fingers below. This breathing really doesn't affect this at all. I'm not messing with the diaphragm. I was using holding to hold real still on this. So usually technique wise, you're going up maybe 10 kV on this one. You're shooting through quite a bit more bone, a little bit more density. Uh, so sometimes on males, you shoot straight. Um, sometimes with people who have really large shoulders, I've actually angled the opposite way. That actually the spine is angled the opposite way because of large shoulders, and narrow waist. So kind of look at the patient. Uh, and make your judgment from there. On average, females 10 degrees, males straight, you're gonna get it about 95% of the time. Have a great day.